Okay, Dame, so the next question is from Janine, and Janine says that she had an interesting situation in North Carolina with the Confederate flag. Uh, and uh, she wrote a lot here, but uh, I told I told Janine that we, we, can o- we can only answer short questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten this question to two sentences. Uh, she says, what does a person do when you encounter people who love the Confederate flag? Does this mean that they want to harm me? What do you think, Dame, when you see that? I mean, generally speaking, when people put a flag up, that's like a clear indication of their point of view and their perspective and a warning of what to stay away from. You know what I mean? It makes them a complete suspect of any kind of foul play on any level. So it's almost like a warning sign. But usually when people are promoting ignorance at that level, you know, it doesn't promote that they're that intelligent. You know what I mean? And, you know, you look at the quality of living, usually, of the people that are doing that, and it's not usually a quality of living that I want any part of. It's usually big, dirty wheels, you know, at the gun, in front of the gun store, you know, sleeveless shirts. It's not like it's a tasteful perspective. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, when I look at that, I look at it like it's usually overcompensation for lack of what they're doing you know, makes them feel better to blame it on somebody else to the extent that you got a flag to represent it. So it's almost like it's hard to even care about a person that doesn't have that much confidence in themselves to be worried about their judgment of anything else. Like, I just, they just don't exist to me. It's almost they're laughable. I almost feel sorry for them. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost, it's funny that the people that are so racist, you that you know that you're so much more intelligent than they are that you have so much more than they do that you could laugh at them. It's a, it's a good time that a racist is a real idiot. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it, it, the question is when you walk into like the White House and see a Confederate flag, man, now that's a problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you see it in the hands of intelligent people, you know, or people that reflect something you want, or people that, you know, have the ability to organize other intelligent people, that's the only time I would really worry about something like that. And I don't generally see that. You know what I mean? Well, you know, I think it's a good point. Um, you know, uh, you only give you only give idiots power if you're, you're dealing with an idiot that has no power and you acknowledge him. Meaning, you know, if you're dealing with somebody that uh, that has no say in your life, that doesn't pay your bills, that can't change policy, can't change the way you live your life, then what do you care what they think? I mean, if you go throughout the world, I mean, if you think about it, how many people, you know, how many how many white people are there out there who care really care what poor, what poor black people think about them? They don't. You know, we can call them all kinds of names and you know whatever, <laughs> and they don't care. You know what I mean? They they're like whatever. You don't pay my bills. I'm white. I'm I'm fine. Like I'm gonna do okay even if you don't like me. And and that's kind of how I see it. I noticed that when when I got the ability to pay my own bills, when I truly became a boss in my life, um, you know, I did not care about as much about the things that maybe used to bother me when I work for somebody else. Because if I'm going into a job every day and my boss has a Confederate flag in his office, then that affects me, right? Then I'm going to be frustrated about that. But when I decided to get rid of the boss, um, I don't really care if, if somebody else has a Confederate flag in their house. That's what they do. That's their thing. I mean, I don't I don't like the Confederate flag. I mean, it really it is a swastika. It doesn't affect you at all. You know what I'm saying? Boom. There you go. I, I, that's, I think that's why I've always probably never cared about the opinions of others because no one, no one's opinions pay my bills. You know what I'm saying? They don't affect my personal life at all. And I think being a boss it really makes it where you don't have to be worried about perception on any level because you control your own destiny. There you go. And, and and I think I think that that and, and and really it's funny because when I saw Janine's question I thought, okay, this is kind of different from the business questions we normally get. But really to me this takes me back to uh you know when you and I uh first started talking and the thing that we kind of definitely agreed on 100% is when you are a boss, you really control your destiny to the point where you don't have to worry about a lot of things that you have to worry about when you're working for other people. Uh, yeah. You know, you're able to uh, decide how you and your family are going to live, what you and your family are going to do. And not only do you, it, it, not only do you overcome racism, but you overcome it because it's almost like it, in your in the workspace, it becomes almost non-existent. It doesn't mean that it's not out there, but it, it, it doesn't affect you. You become above racism. Boom. There you go. It's a uh, it, it, it's out. Business has no color. You have the ability. 
ability to generate income. Nobody really cares about your color. <laughs> that, that, that's really true, and it's funny. It's funny. I mean, even when you, it's, like you say that, you have to be, you know, we have to be careful just because there's people out there who might say, "Oh, you're trying to say racism doesn't exist," and it's like, no, it's not that it doesn't exist. It's just that. Um, it affects you more when you depend on people like that to pay your bills. You know, and, and, and the biggest mistake that a lot of people make is that they're raised in an environment where you're taught to live like a caged animal. You're taught that the best thing you can ever do as a man, as a, as a woman, as a human being is to go find some some white person that's going to give you a job. You know, and, and I just think that that's, that's, that's just flawed thinking. And I don't think you want to inject your children with the poison of that kind of flawed thinking. I'll let you get the last word on the day. I mean, you know, I can't say it no better. Period. You know what I mean? All right. If you don't get, if you don't get power to racism, then it doesn't exist. But it does exist in some forms when it has anything to do with paying your bills. But that's your responsibility to make sure it doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? There you go, and that's what intelligent boss moves is all about. Be a boss. Be intelligent. Make moves. Uh, if if something is hammering you or breaking you down, then make a move. Get out from under it. Don't just survive in the middle of chaos or in the middle of dysfunction. Or don't if somebody knocks you in the mud, don't just get comfortable in the mud. Get your ass out. Period. All right.